third lecture in the Chauvin syndrome series. We are going to discuss the management of the syndrome. Starting with the strategy to the treatment. The underlying causative process of dry eye are generally not reversible and management is therefore structured around the control of symptoms and the prevention of surface damage. Dry eye workshop have produced guidelines based on earlier international task force guidelines for dry eye in which suggested treatment options depend on the level of severity of disease graded from 1 to 4. The DUES guidelines can also be applied in a graded approach proceeding to the next level if the preceding measures are inadequate. Starting with level 1. First of all, education and environmental or dietary modifications. Number 1 is the establishment of realistic expectations and emphasis on the importance of compliance. Lifestyle review including the importance of blinking whilst reading, watching television or using a computer screen which should be oriented below eye level to minimize palpebral aperture size and the management of contact lens wear. Then environmental review, for example increasing humidity may be possible for some environments. Installation aids for eye drops uh, uh, should be advocated for patients with reduced dexterity, for example, manufacturer supplied or makeshift such as nutcrackers to hold plastic bottles, uh, especially in cases of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Caution the patient that laser refractive surgery can exacerbate dry eye. Number two is systemic medication review to exclude contributory effects and eliminate offending agents. Discontinuation of toxic or preserved topical medication if possible. Number three is artificial tear substitutes including gels and ointments. Some authorities advocate the use of preserved drops should fall within level one and categorize non-preserved drops as a level two measures. Mucolytic agents may be specifically indicated for some patients. Then is the eyelid therapy. Basic measures such as warm compressors and lid hygiene for blepharitis, reparative lid surgery, for example, entropion, ectropion, excessive lid laxity, or scleral show may be considered as an early measure. Nocturnal leg of thalmos can be addressed by taping the lid closed at bedtime, wearing swimming goggles during sleep or in extreme cases by lateral tarsography. comes level two, uh, which includes number one, non-preserved tear substitutes uh, are categorized as level two treatment by some authorities. And then comes anti-inflammatory agents uh, such as topical steroids, oral omega fatty acids, and other agents such as topical cyclosporins. Number three are tetracyclines for pneumonitis or rosacea. Then are the punctal plugs. Uh, after that comes uh, secretagogues, for example, pilocarpine, uh, sevamelin, and uh, ribavipite. Then uh, there is the role of moisture chamber, uh, spectacle, and spectacle side shields. Then we will be discussing level 3 and 4. Level 3 includes serum eye drops, which are autologous or umbilical cord uh, serum, contact lenses, or permanent punctal occlusions. Level 4 includes systemic anti inflammatory agents, uh, surgery, including eyelid surgery, such as tarsography, salivary gland autotransplantation. Um, and mucous membrane or amniotic membrane transplantation for corneal complications. Now we are going to discuss some of these agents individually. First of all, tear substitutes. 
Uh, tear substitutes have a relatively simple formulation that cannot approximate the complex components and structure of the normal tear film. Their delivery is also periodic rather than continuous. Almost all are based on replacement of the aqueous phase of the tear film. There are no mucus substitutes and paraffin is only an approximation to the action of tear lipids. The optimal frequency of installation varies with agent and with severity. The different types are number one drops and gels. Uh, a large uh, range of preparations is available for uh, when it comes to drops and gels. One uh, agent or category of preparation has not demonstrated superiority and particular agent uh, are often preferred by individual patients with limited rationality. Cellulose derivatives such as hypromellose, methyl cellulose are appropriate for mild cases. Carbomore gels adhere to ocular surfaces and so are longer lasting. But some patients are troubled by slight blurring. Other agents, including polyvinyl alcohol, which increase the persistence of tear film and is useful in mucin deficiency, sodium hyaluronate, povidine, glycerine, propylene glycol, uh, polysorbate, and others. Now, diphosol is a newer agent that works as a topical secretagogue. Then are ointments containing petroleum or paraffin mineral oil. Uh, they can be used at bedtime to supplement daytime drops or gel installations. Daytime use is precluded by market, marked blurring. Some practitioners do not prescribe these for long term use. Other types are eyelid sprays which are applied to the closed eye and typically contain a liposome based agent that may stabilize the tear film and reduce evaporation and others are artificial tear inserts in place once or twice daily offer extended duration treatment and are preferred by some patients. Mucolytic agents like acetylcysteine 5% drops may be useful in patients with corneal filaments and mucus blocks which acetylcysteine dissolves. It may cause stinging on installation. Acetylcysteine is malodorous and has limited shelf life. Uh, manual debridement of filaments may also be useful. Preservatives uh, can be a potent source, source of toxicity, especially after functal occlusion. Numerous non-preserved drops are now available, including some multi-dose products, and in general should be used in preference to preservative containing preparation and any more than mild disease or with installation more than three or four times daily. If possible, preservative free formulations should also be used for dry eye patients when other topical medication is required, for example, in treatment of glaucoma. Newer preservatives such as polyquad or curite seem to exhibit lower ocular surface toxicity than older agents such as benzylconium chloride. Hemoderivative treatment has been used to manage severe of ocular surface disease, including graft versus host disease uh, uh, related dry eye, Sjogren syndrome, post LASIK dry eye, uh, persistent epithelial defects, and recurrent erosions. Uh, excessive use of preserved lubricating eye drops can result in corneal toxicity. After tear substitutes, there is a role of punctal occlusions. Uh, Punctal occlusion uh, reduces drainage and thereby preserves natural tears and prolongs the effect of artificial tears. It is of uh, greatest value in patients with moderate to severe keratoconjunctivitis sicca who have not responded to frequent installation of topical agents. It can be temporary, reversible or permanent. Temporary occlusion can be achieved by inserting collagen plugs into the canalic line. They dissolve over a number of weeks. The main aim is to ensure that epiphora does not occur following permanent occlusion. Initially, the inferior puncta are included and the patient is interviewed after one or two weeks. If the patient is now asymptomatic and without epiphora, the plugs can be removed and the inferior canalic life permanently occluded. In severe keratoconjunctivitis sicca, both the inferior and superior canalic life can be plugged. 
then in cases of reverse prolonged occlusion can be achieved with silicon or long acting uh, two to month two to six months long collagen plugs as it is uh, seen in the pictures here these are silicon plugs uh, once uh, they, there is this applicator in the first picture and second is the placement uh, Problems include extrusion, granuloma formation, and distal migration. Plugs that pass into the horizontal portion of the canaliculus cannot be visualized, and although they can usually be flushed out with saline, if they cause epipora, this is not always possible, and surgical retrieval may be needed. Uh, and then is the uh, permanent occlusion. It should be undertaken only in patients with severe dry eye who have had a positive response with temporary plugs without epipora. It should be avoided in patients, especially if young, who may have reversible pathology. All four puncta should not be occluded at the same time. Permanent occlusion is performed following punctal dilation with bicoagulation, uh, coagulating the proximal canaliculus with cautery. Following successful occlusion, it is important to watch for signs of recanalization. Laser cautery seems to be less consistently effective uh, than surgical thermal coagulation. Then comes the role of anti-inflammatory agents like topical steroids which generally uh, low intensity preparations such as fluoromethylone are effective supplementary treatment for acute exacerbations the risk of longer treatment must be balanced against the potential benefits in each case uh, other than that are omega fatty acid supplements for example omega-3 fish oil flaxseed oil can have a dramatic effect on symptoms and may facilitate the a reduction of topical medication other than that are oral tetracyclines for extended course, often three months at a relatively low dose, may control uh, associated blepharitis, especially meibomianitis, and reduce tear levels of inflammatory mediators. Doxycycline may be preferred to minocycline on the grounds of adverse effect profile. Then topical cyclosporin, usually 0.05%, reduces T-cell mediated inflammation of lacrimal tissue, resulting in an increase in the number of goblet cells and reversal of scamous metaplasia of the conjunctiva. Uh, then there is low role of contact lenses. Although contact lens wear can exacerbate dry eye, particularly due to inflammatory, sensory and evaporative effect, the symptoms can be over, uh, outweighed by the reservoir effect of fluid trapped behind the lens. In addition, contact lenses are effective at relieving symptoms resulting from secondary corneal changes. However, patients should be cautioned that there is an increased risk of bacterial keratitis. Several manufacturers have developed contact lenses specifically Typically designed to reduce dry eye discomfort during lens wear. The materials used, like silicon hydrogel, retain moisture for 12 to 16 hours and are single use daily disposable. Occlusive gas permeable scleral contact lenses provide a reservoir of saline over cornea uh, and are occasionally used in patients with an extremely dry eye and exposure. Silicon rubber lens, which are uh, which were used in the past, are no longer available. Then uh, they, we can do optimization of environmental humidity by reduction of the room temperature to minimize evaporation of tears, or by using of room humidifiers. Uh, they can be tried, but are frequently disappointing because much uh, apparatus is incapable of significantly increasing the relative humidity of an average sized room a temporary local increase in humidity can be achieved uh, with moist chamber goggles or side shields to glasses but may be cosmetically unacceptable uh, miscellaneous options include botulinum toxin injection to the orbicularis muscle uh, it may help control the blepharospasm that uh, often occurs in severe dry eye injected uh, at the medial canthus 
It can also reduce tear drainage, presumably by limiting the lead movement. Then are the oral cholinergic agonists, such as uh, pilocarpine, 5 mg, 4 times a day, and uh, sevimelin uh, may reduce the symptoms of dry eye and dry mouth in patients with Sjogren's syndrome. Adverse effects include blurred vision and sweating, may be less marked with sevimelin. Then submandibular gland transplantation uh, for extreme dry eyes requires extensive surgery and may produce excessive levels of mucus in the tear film. Uh, afterwards, uh, we can also uh, explore the option of serum or autologous blood uh, eye drops. Autologous or umbilical cord serum 20 to 100%. The blood component remaining after clotting has produced subjective and objective improvements in studies in patients with dry eye and may aid the healing of persistent epithelial defects. However, their production and storage are associated with practical challenges. Finger prick autologous blood is a low cost, readily accessible and practical treatment that appears to be safe and effective. Now this is it with the treatment. I know it is uh, longer than expected, but uh, it is important to treat dry eye. Uh, thank you for listening. If you like the lecture, please subscribe and click on the like button.